All right, this is uh, Chapter 11, Lesson 1, Part B. So we're going to be covering uh, permutations with repetitions, and then later on, permutations with constraints. So first of all, what do we mean by permutations with, with repetitions? Um, well, here's an example. Imagine that the letters of the word book are written on tiles. So on one tile there's a B, and then there's an O, and then there's another O. We want to rearrange the tiles. How many different arrangements are possible? Well, um, for now, what I'm going to do to make sure that we recognize the difference between the two O's, how about when I write it, I'll write uh, one of the O's in, in blue and one of the O's in green, just to keep track of it. So if I start off and I write uh, here B uh, O, and then I'll put a green O, and then back to my blue K, so that would be oops, that would be my f my first one, right? So uh, Another way I could write it is if I wrote these, picked these tiles, the two O's, in the different order. So if I wrote B, and then OK here, and then the green one there. Okay, so how else could I uh, rearrange this? If I'm going to do all the ones that start with the letter B first. So now I'll go B, oh, I'll go blue uh, here, and I'll go, how about if I switch these ones here, and I go with the K, and then the other green one. So you, and then I'll switch the O's again. So I'll get okay. So I'm gonna uh, pause and then just write them all out because I think it'd be get kind of boring just to watch me because there's quite a few. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, now I've written them all out. Um, oh, I noticed I didn't fill in quite all of my missing O's here. So you see, um, I tried to do some type of a, of a pattern so I just wouldn't miss any. And don't worry, this isn't something that you're going to be having to do. I think it's just to illustrate our point. And here's the point. You'll notice that here's book and then book. Uh, the two O's I switch, right? Because these are physically different tiles. And now I wrote one blue and one green just so that to remind ourselves that these are two distinct different tiles. But when we make the arrangements, these O's wouldn't be the same color, or wouldn't be a different color, and these would, would look identical, right? Th these two would look like the same one. So let's read what the text says. Now that we've written them all out, we should notice that many of the arrangements are identical. For instance, Kobo and Kobo, so that's right here, uh, look the same, but I've switched the O's. So although we have four factorial, and that's going to be the same thing as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 24. And indeed, if I do count these, 2, 4, 6, 12, 24, if there are 24 there. So although there are 24, uh, the fact that each one is represented twice here, um, we really can divide by 2. So uh, how many would this be? 4 factorial divided by an and you'll see the reason why I'm going to do 2 factorial instead of 2. Even though 2 factorial, 2 times 1, is the same thing as 2, uh, we really only have 12 different distinct ones. So if the question was, how many different arrangements can you have of the letters B, O, O, K, you'd say, all right, there are four letters, therefore four factorial, but one of the letters repeats twice, so I would divide by 2 factorial. This 2 because there are two O's. All right, so here's our general rule. In general, a set of n objects with a objects that are identical can be arranged n factorial divided by a factorial. What happens if there's more than one set of repeats? So if looking down really quickly, here's an example where I've got an 8 repeating and a 1 repeating. Well, we can make more of them. We can say n factorial divided by a factorial, b factorial, c factorial. Uh, so may not make too much sense now, but when we do a few examples, I think it'll make more sense. All right. Again, how about I'll do the uh, your turn. You don't fill it in. You hit pause and then do it yourself. And you probably by memory because it's really not that complicated. So in how many different arrangements can you make using all the letters in Manitoba? Well, first thing we need to do is we have to figure out our number of letters. So if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So in other words, my n is going to be equal to 8. I have 8 letters. So I know that the numerator is going to be 8 factorial. Now are there some repetitions? It seems to me when I'm looking at it, uh, my a 
Uh, that's the only thing that's repeating, and there are two a's. So I'm going to be dividing by 2 factorial. So 8 factorial, so um, I'll say 8 letters, 2 a's, so 8, eight factorial divided by 2 factorial. Uh, I'm not even sure what that is, let's just check it out. Okay, I just used my calculator, and it is 20,160. How many different arrangements of all the numbers of 81818 can you make? Okay, so let's count the letters. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 letters. So in other words, I will have 5 factorial. Now I'm going to have 2 uh, factorials in the denominator because it seems to me that there are uh, 3 8s and there are 2 1s. So in other words, A is going to be equal to 3 and B is going to be equal to 2. So I will say 3 factorial times 2 factorial. You don't even have to have a uh, multiplication symbol in between there. So what is 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial? That works out to 10. So there are, oh, that's not a 16, it's a 10. Make that better. There we go, 10. I'll even put a box around it and make it special. Okay. Uh, here's a neat one. How many paths can you follow from A to B if you can only move up or left? So it's like if you're going from you know, school to home and you've got these number of blocks to do, how many different ways can you do it? Well, uh, if you have to move only up or right, okay, let's think about this. I'm starting here. At some point in time, I have to go up, up, up three times, right? So in other words, I've got one way to do it is to say up, up, up. One, two, three times. I have to go right one, two, three, four, five times. One, two, three, four. There we go. So there, this would be maybe the code for if I was taking that path. That would be up, 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 right, 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 right. Um, I can do any variation on this, right? I can go uh, maybe up, up, right, and then right right, 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 up. I'm just switching one of them here. So if I was to do that way, it would be up, up, and then a bunch of rights, and then up. Okay, so I just, oops, somehow it all erased there. So the second one is like that, okay? Um, what m my point is, is that we can change this question into uh, a question about arranging letters of a word. So thinking about, I've got these letters, how many different arrangements can I make of that, uh, of those letters? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters altogether. So I'm going to get uh, an eight factorial over, well, I've got three U's, and I have one, two, three, four, five R's. So that's how it works out. So eight factorial divided by three factorial, five factorial. I think when I do the math, I get 56. Here's a little note about Kobo. Did you notice that Kobo is actually just a permutation of book? Oh, those guys. Um, okay, now permutations with constraints. And if you want to, you can take a look, and the textbook has the same example uh, on page 50, 522, example number 4, and they uh, do a bit more uh, extended of an explanation. So here we have five people seated on a bench. And how many different ways can they be arranged? So before we go on this constraint, let's just think about, okay, if we got five people uh, on a bench, so we have one, two, three, four, five spots, and let's say that there were no constraints. Let's pretend right now, in how many ways can they be arranged? And forget about the if part, okay? Well, we would put, uh, you know, the first person, there's five different ways because there's, you know, five people. So we can put five people there, and then we could put four, and then we could put three, Two, and then there's only one left, we have to put that person there. So it's another way, another way of writing it very quickly is to say 5 factorial. Like so, so as soon as you have some number of people to seat in a row, it's always going to be that number factorial. Okay, so th with that started, now let's think about this first constraint. It says, what if E has to be seated in the middle? Okay, so if we're doing this question, there's my five spots. Now this one has to be the letter E. So there's only one way to do that. Okay. Now at this point, there are four people left. right? There's four places uh, for them to go, and there's four people left, so it's going to be, there's four different ways to put that one in, 
three different ways to put this one in. Now there's only two people left. There's only two people, two ways to, to, to seat someone in that chair or in that place in the bench, and then there's only one person left. So really, when you look at this, this would be, you place your first person down, okay? So whenever you have these uh, constraints, deal with the constraint first, okay? Deal with the restriction, another way, is another word we use. So put this person down first, and then put the rest of the people down. So really this is going to be the same thing as a four factorial, okay, which I think is 24. Okay, so for the next one it says, what if A and B must sit together? Okay, yeah, all A and B, they're all, they're such troublemakers, making and saying, oh, we have to sit together. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go and we're going to pretend, we're going to pretend that A and B are one person. Okay, so uh, the the words we often use for this one is that we're going to, it, it sounds a little bit mean, but we are going to tie uh, A and B together. Okay, so what that means is we're going to think of them, pretend that they are one object. Okay, A, B is one object. So now how many objects do we have? Well, we have A, B. Remember, they're tied together. And then we have C, D, and E. So we only have four objects to place, right? These guys are going to take a double spot, but that's okay. So now we have uh, four different ways to place, A, B, C, D, and E. So when we place these, this is going to be equal to be four factorial, okay? But we're not quite done because now we have to think about how many different ways can we place AB, right? In each of those situations, let's say if we did, we put AB here, right? And then we put C and D and E there. That would be one of the ways in this four factorial, in those in this 24 different ways. But we could also say it would be identical if we did BA, right? So within this group of AB tied together, there are, since there's two objects, right, we have to place them within these two, A and B, there's going to be two ways to put down uh, A or B in the first spot and one way to put them in the second spot. So there will be two factorial. So uh, just thinking about this, we're, we're kind of doing two, um, two decision making. One is seat the group of four, okay, and that's four factorial. And now within this group of two that we made, we have to seat them. Okay, so since we have to do uh, seat the group of four and the group of two, when you see the word and, we're going to be multiplying. So it's going to be four factorial multiplied by two factorial. First we did this and then we did that. It's kind of like your salad and then your entree. So it's four factorial times two factorial, uh, which is equal to 24 times two. I guess that's 48 different ways. Okay. What about if A and B must not sit together? Okay, well, uh, if you wanted to refer to the textbook, uh, if you wanted to go back, they have kind of a long version and then a short version. And I think I'm just going to teach you the short version because I like it so much better. When you see these not type of a questions, right, how, uh, how many different ways can A and B, uh, or can they sit if A and B must not sit together? Really what we're going to do is we're going to say, what are all the ways minus if uh, A and B must sit together? So if we think of the entire different set of how A, B, C, D, and E, thinking of them of, of five different ways, five different people sitting down, the, all the ways they can do it is five factorial. Right, and that's the that's pretty pretty straightforward. No restrictions at all. But then, if we take away where A and B are sitting together, and that's what we just did. Well, tie them together, put the four together, and then within the group of two, seat those ones. Uh, this will be our answer. So five factorial is 120 minus. Uh, we just figured out that was 48, so we would get 72 as our answer. Okay, let's do the your turn, and again, I'll do it once, and then uh, you try to do it on your own, uh, the exact same questions right away. So it says, how many different ways can you arrange three different calculus books, five different biology books, and four different economic 
books on a shelf. Okay, so uh, it's this n factorial over a factorial, b factorial, c factorial, where n is the total number of objects. So 3 plus 5 plus 4, let me think about that, that's tough. 3 plus 5 plus 4 seems to be 12. So in my numerator, I'm going to have uh, 12 factorial. Oh, I didn't read very well. How many different ways can you arrange the book if not restricted? Well, if there's no restrictions, it's just it's just this one, right? So 12 factorial, which I would definitely have to uh, get my calculator out because it is 4, 7, 9, 0, 0, 1, 6, 0, 0. Big, big number. How many different ways can you arrange the books if they must be arranged by subject area? Now, this is the question that I anticipated earlier on. So I would say, okay, it's going to be n factorial divided by this a factorial, b factorial, c factorial. So this is going to be 12 factorial. So that's all the books all together, no restrictions. Um, but now if I have to, it's like having a word, right? If I, let's say if I had a if I had a word calculus, 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 biology, 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 economics, economics, there's echo going on. Okay, if that's my word and I said how many different ways, how many different arrangements can I make with that? It's kind of like one of those ones, right? So now I say, okay, I've got three of this, three factorial. I've got five of those, five factorial. And I've got four of those, so it's four factorial. Which is definitely a math, uh, a calculator question at this point. It works out to 103,680. How many ways can you arrange the books if all the calculus books must go on the right end of the shelf? Okay, so if we're going to do sort of our, our placement idea, sort of like that AB thing we did just a second ago. All right. So first of all, I'm going to I'm going to tie these things together. So I'm going to call uh, all my calculus books as one object. Okay, so my calculus books is one object, all my five biology books is an object, and all my economic books is an object. So I've got th three objects, right? So I'm going to tie, how would I write this? Tie the subject area books together. Tie subjects together. Equals three objects. Now let's first place the three objects. So I've got three spots for them to put in, but I got to put the calculus here, don't I? So I've only got one way to put my calculus books down because they say they have to go on the right end. So my my group of calculus books goes on the right. Now I have two subject areas left. So there's two ways I can put it here and one way to put it there. So so far, there's only two ways to place, you know, deciding. So which goes first? Well, first is either going to be the biology or the economics. Second will be whatever's left over. And third, I know they have to be calculus. Now, I have to place within the groups. Okay, so inside of the groups, now I'm going to go and say, okay, I've got three different calculus books. So when I place the, the three calculus books, so in this group over here, I've sort of expand that up. I got these three inside the calculus books. It's going to be three times two times one, or just three factorial. So place within each group, within each subject area. Uh, and when I do that, I will get uh, three factorial for the calculus books. Uh, how many books are there in the other one? The, there's five biology and four economics, so times five factorial times four factorial. Uh, so since I have to do the first one and the second one, my result is I'm going to have to multiply it all together. So it's going to be two times three factorial times five factorial times four factorial, which is some big number, three, 34,000. Five hundred and sixty. All right. All right. Just for the sake of not having one really long video, I'm just going to uh, stop this one and then start another video for permutations with cases.